All right. Well, hey, Coaches Up for Change. It's Dee Corchin. Meg is here. We are here for our weekly Monday night team time, just a, really a time to connect as coaches, as a community, and really just be in touch with each other, learn and grow. And um, so I'm excited to be with you. We had a great executive director and above leadership call today. And um, some of that stuff will get shared here tonight as well. Um, but Meg, I want to go ahead and have her jump on because um, Meg is going to be facilitating the community call at eight. So I thought maybe you could fill us in on that. Um, and then maybe talk about our Atlanta event we got coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, everybody. So hope that you will invite your clients to attend our client call at eight o'clock. It is going to be on the effects of alcohol while you are on program. So we're going to take a kind of a scientific approach. It's going to feel like we're in a, a living room together as we're talking. So very podcast style, but we're going to talk about the science of the program and what the body does when we have alcohol, when we're on plan. So this would be a great one. I think, you know, it's a hot topic for all of us, but if you have any clients struggling, definitely recommend you send them the link or send them the recording. And for those of you that are local coaches, uh, we wanted to remind you that we have a local event coming up on Saturday and we are really excited about it. We are going to have a um, counselor come in that's actually going to talk to us a lot about body image and um, it's going to be a different type of event, but very, very powerful. So we're excited and hope we will see as many of you as are able to join us on Saturday. And that starts at 10 o'clock. So um, more details will be in uh, Coaches Out for Change, and we hope to see you there. Yeah, it's posted there. It's also posted in our client group. But we know that um, your attendance, if you live local, and if you live anywhere in the Southeast, like just know you are welcome. Um, we would love to have you here um, with us. And then if you have clients in the area, even if you don't live here, we'll take care of them. Um, but inviting your clients to be a part of this, I think... Um, we're going to make it, like Meg said, a little bit more of a roundtable uh, discussion and um, and really talk about the heart of and the challenges that people face. So I'm excited about it. It's called Health and Harmony. So um, we are into a new month of October. It's October 2nd already. So uh, if you haven't been doing a map lately, a monthly action plan um, might be something to, to consider doing, especially if you're looking to grow your business. Um, but before we leap into October, always like to celebrate September. So um, just have some, some cool slides. I think you're going to be impressed by what you see um, with what's been happening with the team. So I think I told you we don't have our graphics person to make us fancy videos anymore. So <laughs> it's, it's a slideshow, but um, but excited about this. So this is things that happen in our team um, as an organization. So um, the client support bonus. So these are individuals that had three, between three and five new clients, like or three and four new clients in this month. Um, I just want you to know we doubled the amount of people that earned this um, over last month. So that's a great sign. It means you're out, you're helping people, talking to people. Um, and a lot of people, that have, a couple of people have shared on um, this that these are often their clients that they got were people that they have been sowing seeds for for quite some time. So it was a really great lesson in staying consistent and persistent. Um, and then our 5% earners, super excited about this. So Shauna and Frank Davis, um, Meg Johnson and Kelly McCulloch. And I'm going to give uh, Kelly a special ring because I don't know if she's on. Oh, she, I should let her get in. She's in the waiting room. Let's let Kelly come in. Um, but celebrating the 5% client support bonus, Kelly was the leader um, of our team with eight new clients in the month of September. So that is huge. <laughs> you might want to talk to Kelly about what Kelly's doing because it seems to be working. Um, other great things, 10K Club, um, Lori Cole, Shauna and Frank, Vicki Feldman, Meg Johnson, and Kelly McCulloch. So congratulations to you guys. And we had two new coaches um, join our team and our organization. So Ruth Jordan, um, sponsored by Frank and Shauna, and Molly McGarry, um, sponsored by Philip and Lauren Grove. So excited to see you guys and what happens with your businesses and the amount of people that you can impact. And so our really big news here in the cute hat is our newest executive director, Lori Pulver. So um, 
could not be more excited. You have heard Lori speak in the past, but I want her sponsor, Julie Apple, um, to just speak for a minute. Julie has worked closely with Lori and just have you introduce Lori for us. Yes. Hey guys, it's definitely exciting. Um, Lori, she started coaching about a year ago, almost to the month and day. And we've talked about this since she started and she has just consistently planned. We've created a just monthly process. She has a great full-time job. So this, she fits in with her family and boys and traveling, um, for college visits. And she's just done. I mean, you guys, she is just overflowing and bubbling with excitement. So Lori, you share what you, um, have been doing because it's pretty exciting. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. And I'm happy to share, um, and super excited to finally reach this incredible milestone. I say <laughs> I've been you know, equating it to feeling like I just climbed the hugest mountain and I got to the top of the mountain and I'm kind of like <laughs> shouting at the top of my of my mountain that I got to. And that's what I feel like it sometimes feels like, you know, we're, we're climbing and we're working really hard and, and putting in all that effort to get to the top of the mountain. And now we have, you know, I definitely have another mountain to climb and we continue to have goals to achieve and, and our next mountains to go, but it feels really super great, I have to say. Um, and I've just been so elated to have gotten to this point. Um, it's been a really wild year and, and really super fun year. And I think that some of the things that, that I've done that I can you know attribute it to is just being present um, in all of our trainings, on our team time calls, going to Dallas, going to convention. And I found that all of those things, being present everywhere was just so helpful. It just added another layer onto every aspect of growth, you know, both personally for me and professionally. I can't believe when I look back at the year, um, how far I've come in, in both of those areas. It's, it's just quite amazing. And I attribute that to so many of you that I follow and watch and have learned to grow from. You guys are amazing. The most incredible group of, of leaders that I have the opportunity to work with. So it's been such a joy and, and I'm loving the fact I'm, I'm sprinkling my seeds everywhere I go. And, and I've been utilizing that tactic really to be present and, and to speak to a lot of people along my journey and let it, letting them know what I'm doing all of the time. So I think all of those connections that I've made and relationships that I've made and built are, are slowly starting to show their rewards as, as these seeds in my trees are starting to grow. <laughs> I was explaining my little analogy of, of my tree is, is starting to grow and I'm having branches grow here and branches grow there. And it's neat to see now, you know, when I, when I started actually sketching out this, uh, this tree for myself, where the clients, you know, are coming from and, and where it's, it's building upon. And I'm seeing definitely definite areas where I see an incredible amount of growth in different lines and, and relationships in different groups growing. And then I have other areas that need to grow a little bit more. So it's helping me focus more um, where I need to place my energy um, now and continue to grow and, and continue to plant my seeds. So thank you for letting me share tonight, Dee. I hope that helps. Um, many of you, you know, in, in your journey along the way as well. Yeah, um, I hope you would see all the smiles and the comments. Um, your energy is just contagious. And, you know, I was just think, listening to you, like you are wearing the CEO, like the CEO hat of a business owner. Like you are looking to say, okay, what's working? What's multiplying? Okay, what maybe not needs, you know, can be taken off the plate or do I need to put some more attention on? Um, but I think the coolest thing, Lori, is your energy and your enthusiasm. And the one thing you beat yourself up on is not being on social media very much. And so it's like, guys, she's built an ED business with very little, you know, minimal social media presence. So um, really just shows by coming out there with your heart, what is possible. So we are excited for you. Keep going. Um, Lori is one of several on our team that are getting close for the cruise to the incentive trip. Um, so if that's something that you are on pace for, even if you're not like I've seen crazy things happen, we've got October and November. So excited to see that we'll be celebrating some people for that as well. 
So we have been talking <clears throat> for the past couple of weeks. We decided to kind of slow things down. Um, we've really been embracing Bob Heilig and his trainings and what he's been bringing um, to Optavia. So he did a training called Three Simple Shifts to Transform Your Results. Um, and we, the first shift that we talked about was creating content um, that actually connects people together, that creates engagement, et cetera. So for the past two weeks, we have been posting um, a daily challenge in the group. And I'm just um, would be curious if you've taken that challenge or not. But one person um, that really has that I've, I have the opportunity to, to directly mentor now is Debbie Johnson. And Debbie has been doing a multitude of things and she's going to speak specifically to this content. But the one thing I really admire about Debbie is she's got an attitude of like, I'm just going to try this. I'm going out with a heart to connect people. We're just going to see where it goes um, versus a gripping, I got to get results kind of thing. And I think it's really paying big dividends. So Debbie, we'd just love to hear from you what your experience has been with that creative, co creating content that connects. Thank you, Dee. Um, and I, mostly I just want to say, I know that you and Meg have both been posting our little prompts and They've been super helpful for me. Um, social media is not a challenge for me, but it has really been helpful to refresh what I post. Um, I did just write a couple things that were um, helpful for me, and I wanted to share like three particular posts that turned up the most interest. Um, one thing is I just wanted to be coachable because I do want to grow, and I just um, want to lean in to you know the wisdom that you guys offer. Um, I think one really important thing, and I pulled this from a podcast that Bob Heilig, um spoke in, was to connect to one person. Like if as I'm speaking or I'm um, typing a post that I'm literally directing it to one person. And that way it's not so much broadcasting as just really trying to connect through social media to that one person. Um, and then, you know, how to be, how to be vulnerable um, and sharing from a place of healing versus maybe maybe some negative energy. So that's something that I'm trying to work on as well. Um, one really, uh, a, a really uh, one post I got that got a lot of engagement was the five tips. Um, and I, th I think it was just a photo of me um, that I had gotten dressed for like a networking event, but, um, and it was five tips on how to stretch your food budget. I took that particular post and I spread it over a couple of platforms and um, I actually got more or engagement on the on the groups than I even did on my personal. Um, I did do, um, I got a great involvement. I got great engagement on, I have a secret. Um, and like, it's just a really silly photo with like, shh, you know, and like lots and lots of engagement around that. And then um, the one that probably got the most engagement and was pretty uncomfortable for me. Um, it was a topic that I've been really wanting to address. And, um, and, I, it was a hot topic. I happened to touch on the injectables and um, and it definitely got a lot of conversations started. Some were not super nice and I had to like dig deep on for myself because I had to realize maybe they were not reacting to me. They were reacting to the emotions that that post brought up for them. Um, and that sometimes, you know, I'm an Enneagram too. That's not always easy to feel rejected or to feel confronted. So um, that's something I had to work on, but um, also just approach it all. I, I tend to go toward everything with humor. Um, and those are the funnest ones for me. My background's nursing. I felt very strongly about the, I still feel very strongly about the weight loss injections. So um, just to approach all of that with love and kindness, just like we do everything, right? We just want people to feel seen and heard and validated and all that. Um, and like you if you haven't done the challenge, I, I know that those posts will remain in there. And um, I think I may just kind of keep it going and do tweaks on them here and there. Um, but it's really helped me to refine my purpose personally. Um, and that certainly, I believe, has um, flowed out and shown up even in how I present myself at networking events and um, and that kind of thing. And even it's just in my life, you know, I go to the gym and I'm talking to three or four people that I might not have ever talked to before. So um, I hope that's helpful for you guys. I personally really enjoyed, I enjoyed the whole chat, not a challenge, but I enjoy the content. So I appreciate um, the time that you guys put forth for us for that. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I think it's such a great testimony. I love what you said, like, I wanted to be coachable. I want to grow. So you're willing to try things and do things differently. You stepped into the uncomfortable, you know, of doing that 
um, post that he challenges us, but that's how we create en engagement. That's how we um, create a brand for ourselves. And I think he's really helping us do that in a great way. So, um, and if you haven't seen it, Debbie put a picture out, the thing about the secret. I mean, she had pigtails and <laughs> just a cute, like just went all out, like just being a little goofy with it and um, had tremendous response. So it shows you what people are looking for. You know what I mean? They're not looking for the same old, same old. And I really love what you did, the five tips to stretch your food budget. So you're out there providing value to people. So it's not just, you know, lose weight now, ask me how. So beautiful, beautiful. Um, thank you for that. Last week, we shared um, about moving through the sales process, for lack of a better word, we're calling it a sales process, but providing value to individuals um, to help move them, those people that express interest in a before and after or express interest in what you're doing, um, and then trying to increase the amount of people that see the value of actually coming to the phone and doing the health assessment. Um, so we talked about, you know, um, actually asking some of the questions like, let's say Lori Cole wanted to know more about the program, I might say, well, you know, or whatever, I might say, well, hey, Lori, I'd love to share tell me what what prompts your question you know because I'm trying to find her problem because I am then going to move into the health assessment as the next step and the solution so I'm just curious before we jump into the next topic which is about coach explorers but did anybody have the opportunity to apply that this week or think about it like in your conversations maybe as we were closing out the month and whatnot just want to leave a leave a space here for anybody to maybe um, talk about a personal shift around that. We have crickets. <laughs> Um, when you, when you think about that and when you hear that, and when you think about what you have been doing, cause it might just be because of the way the, the environment has been, you may just not have had one of those moments where you were actually in that chain of the process, but did that resonate with you in terms of, of doing more of that? Because I actually found myself, I tripped up and I went right to the health assessment instead of doing that because it was just my default pattern. So just be aware of that as you're, you know, we're all learning and growing, we're flexing some new skills. So, um, you know, write yourself a note or whatever, but um, I'm hoping that you'll find that helpful. Um, because the next thing is talking about coach explorers. And <clears throat> do you know what the most common way? Well, let me ask you this. How, <laughs> how often are you offering coaching these days? If you were really honest in the past month, how many times have you offered coaching? Let's put it in the chat. One, two, three. Okay. Four to five. Good. Three, one. Good. And part of it is, and, you know, I don't know how these numbers compare, you know, a lot, there's so many factors that go into this. Um, it can be that we don't have that many new clients. So we're not feeling like we really have a, a client base to be offering new client base to um, be offering it to. But the other is more often than not the junk in our own head. Right. And, you know, that that we convince ourselves of a story. Right. And it could be one of a multitude of stories. It could be. Um, that, um, you know, I'm struggling with this business. <laughs> How am I going to offer it to somebody else? How am I going to offer them that this could be the answer to their, their, their dreams? Because what Bob said is, is his belief is, is that we are not 100% convicted that what we're offering in terms of coaching can actually solve their problem and help move them to the next level. Or we've got a story that we're telling ourselves that we're not capable, right, of leading them to success. Um, but the the reality is, and, and I know this happens to me, even with all these years of experience, I can get totally tripped up, right? Get nervous, get get in my head about offering coaching. Um, but what Bob is saying is that's most often in our delivery and our approach that is getting in our way. And so it is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for us. It's uncomfortable for them. So um, thank you guys for your honesty um, with, with how often or not often you're asking um inviting to coaching. Um, but do you know what the number one way that we generally ask the question about coaching? Do you know what that is? Somebody can pop it in the chat or you can come off mute. 
didn't he say something along the lines of it's a way of securing our own um, accountability for our own health journey? Mm -hmm. Very often. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, Lucy, that we're offering it as a solution to as a, a prevention to not go backwards on their health journey, um, rather than a, like a, something that can move them forward to something new. Um, Frank, I think you just nailed it. I think Frank put it in the comments. Um, most often we say, oh, I like that. I think you would make a great coach. Have you ever thought about becoming a coach? All right, raise your hand or blink if you've ever said that to somebody. Have you ever thought about being a coach? Right. And what was the response you got? Nope, because <laughs> honestly, they probably haven't, right? They came here to lose weight, whatever. They're not, coaching's not even on their radar. It's not something they know the value of, et cetera. So most of the time, have you ever thought about coaching or you sound like a coach or you, you know, yeah, you know, you, you know, you make a great coach. Like none of that is really going to hit the heart of somebody else. And so what he said is kind of two things. One, why do we keep asking the question that we already know the answer to? <laughs> like, because what happens then is then we kind of go into a sales mode of, um, you've never thought about coaching. Well, let me tell you why you should really, you really should think about coaching. And let me tell you why, like they didn't even give us permission. We just start into it. Um, and that might not be you, but I'm just going to tell you from experience, I've done that numerous times. Um, so what Bob is saying is that I think that the, that what we want to be doing is from the get go, we want to go back to we are presenting coaching as a, as a solution to a problem. So exactly what Lucy said, most of us are saying it in terms of, Hey, like you're almost to your goal. You know, the best way to secure your own future is to and not go backwards is to coach. Right. Um, and he said, for most of people, that is not going to be enough, or it might be enough for them to order the kit but it's not going to be the enough for them to do what is um, uncomfortable. And this business is work, right? <laughs> you want to get paid, you want to help people, it's going to require work. And so has that ever happened? Have you had, I mean, have you ever had a coach sign up and not do anything? <laughs> yes. So what we want to do is change our ratios. So it has to shift from now, is it an accountability thing? Are we way more successful if you're a coach? 100%. But what the goal is, is that we actually want to be doing that, compounding that with um, moving somebody forward to the next vision. Like, this is great. Like you have, you know what I mean? You've accomplished all this in your health goals. This is what you wanted to do. Um, and now we're going to move, you know what I mean? Move more into optimal health, et cetera. But it's not going to sound like that. What is suggested and what, what is a skill, and he is very clear that this is a skill and a skill to be developed, right? So don't think you're going to know how to do it right away. Let yourself be a beginner. But he talks about asking quality questions early in the process. So when somebody comes to us, right, our number one thing is, right, they're coming to lose weight, to get their nutrition in order, change their habits. Um, that is going to be our primary focus with them, right? Don't have to bring up coaching right away um, with it, you know what I mean? But what, what we want to be doing is finding out more about that. And um, who remembers what the three primary needs are that somebody would have that coaching could help them with. You can come off mute or put it in the chat. There's three reasons really why somebody would become a coach. Money and opportunity. Yep, that's the first one. Purpose. Yep, purpose and meaning and freedom and flexibility. I can tell my Bob Heilig fan in the chat. <laughs> um, but if you like, what would be your reason? If you put it in the chat, what does Optavia provide for you? What was the need it fit for you? Just pop it in the chat. So meaning and purpose, income and opportunity, and or um, the uh, freedom and flexibility. All, Kelly, yeah. Good. 
So we want to ask questions of our clients or people in, in your world. I mean, you know, I felt I came to Optavia because somebody saw a need for me. I was looking for meaning and purpose and an opportunity. You know, I knew I wanted to go back to work, knew I, what, I, what I didn't want to do. So this applies to outside Optavia as well. And a lot of coaches on in my work in this organization came from the outside from invitations around that. Um, so the questions are, you know, that we've got to have, that there's something else. And so we want to ask the questions and he gave an example and there's so many different scenarios and this one's going to sound so clear and it's not going to always be this way. Um, but if you had a situation where you had a, a let's say a, a full-time mom, right? So you've got a client who's a full-time mom. It could have been Meg Johnson, right? When Meg came to me, Meg was a high, you know, highly educated prior work experience, full-time mom. Um, the question would be like, what did, Hey, I'm just curious. What did you work before you had children? right? We're just going to find out what they did, what drew you to that, right? Take notes, take notes, right? We're not going to leap from that question to, oh my God, you should be a coach because this provides meaning and purpose and what, you know, it's taking notes, right? And then um, let's say it's the same, you know, mom or whatever. And then another conversation would be maybe, have you ever like, this scenario he gave the person was a nurse and she did nursing because she wanted to help people. The next question might be in a different conversation. You know, your kids are getting older. Have you ever thought about going back to work? Right. You're going to get your reasons. Why or why not? Probably the fact she would say, um, well, I need something that, you know, it, or if you were going to go back to work, what would you be looking for? Right. So we're going to have them tell you what their needs are. Again, he says that's not necessarily the time that you're going to bring it up. So then it may be, and there's a lot of different scenarios that we could we could, we could could apply this to and we can talk through them if there's time. But the next thing would be when it's time to bring it up, then going back and me saying, hey, Meg, I was thinking about our conversation from a few weeks ago when you said like, you know what, it would be helpful to you to have some you know, additional income or whatever, but you needed flexibility. Would you be willing to take a look at coaching? if that was something that could help in that arena. So notice the big leap there of not asking them, would you consider coaching? Would you, you know, would you like to become a coach? Like that is too big of an ask to go all the way there. So that is where we're looking to bridge and provide value. So we're circling it back to what they told us because we've been asking these intentional questions, circling it back to that. And then um, being able to say, would you be willing to explore? Would you take a look at this? right? Because that's kind of like the health assessment. That is the bridge of helping somebody find the value. So right now we're just trying to provide that little micro value to get them to the coach explore. So um, I know I've been on calls with, with individuals where, um, you know, somebody has said like, Ooh, would you like to become a coach or, Ooh, that sounds good. Would you want a coach? Like we're on a celebration call, but it really is. Let's bring it to the next step, which is a coach explore. Um, so always presenting coaching as a solution. And this is something that's not really revolutionary because we, we as an organization have been talking about it, but I just encourage you that it is a skill that like all the way, like you can start it at any time. So don't be thinking you have to wait for a new client. <laughs> you can start it at any time, but be looking for questions. I ask my clients a lot recently because I'll find people that have been in careers, like just because based on my demographic, they've been in careers for a really long time. So I'll say like, you know, what brought you into that? Um, you know, was that your dream job? Is this what you see yourself doing for the rest of, you know what I mean? Like, is it, you know, or was there anything else you'd ever want to do? Like, I will ask those kind of questions for your people, especially if you think, well, they're high earning this and that and the other. Many times they've just got those handcuffs on those, you know, they mean they don't feel or know that there's anything out there for them. So we're just presenting that opportunity. So I would love to just kind of open this up to see, have you tried this? Have you gotten stuck with it? Um, has it worked? Has it been helpful? Um, just give you a time to like kind of chime in on this. Hey D, it's Jen. I don't know if you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, but kind of like kind of like what you were just saying. I had a conversation with a friend the other day. We had lunch together, and she's been in education for thirty years. She's been in um, like a dorm parent or a dorm 
uh, leader or whatever. And so we were talking about different things. And some of the things that I brought up, she was like, I've never even thought of that. And so I actually kind of introduced coaching to her because she's looking for kind of what's next. Do I retire? Do I move on? Well, one of the things that she's really concerned about is health insurance. And I mentioned to her, well, what if you had an income where you didn't have to worry about the price of health insurance? Because everybody has this concept in their mind that COBRA is so expensive or going on the exchange is so expensive and things like that. And so I just kind of approached it from that perspective to say, what if you could have the time freedom to travel with your husband who's a doctor and has to go to these different conventions? You could coach from anywhere. You can go visit your kids that live all across the country um, and just kind of approached it from that perspective of time, freedom, flexibility. And she kind of said, huh. I never really considered that. So I think that we just have to remember we're kind of a unique group that has thought outside the box. And so many people are not used to that perspective. And so if we introduce it and just say, well, check out what I'm doing. You know, I told her, I said, I can make phone calls while I'm waiting in line to pick the kids up from school. I can do it while I'm on vacation, sitting on the beach, you know, while visiting family, et cetera. And so I just thought that was a neat thing that she just really hadn't even thought of. And so, mm -hmm. you know, people aren't enlightened if you don't let them know what you're doing. So I thought that was kind of neat. That is a brilliant example, brilliant example. And showing it was like, hey, this could be the thing that would provide the flexibility. So you could go to those conferences with your husband and be able to travel solution, problem. And hey, what if it, what if you earned enough that the health insurance wasn't a problem? So again, just asking her to take a look. That's exciting. Yeah. And it took courage on your part to do that. So, well, good. Let's have um, Rebecca share next. One of the things that I that I that I think back about a lot, Dee, is that I when I started program, I I needed the accountability, and I also needed to be able in order to do something in that black and white place that I've always been. I needed to be able to afford it, so I was all in, and part of doing that was coaching so that I could afford it. And what I've noticed is when I look at my back office to see what people are doing, they were telling me they were doing five and one. And they were ordering $150 worth of product. So I think part of what I've noticed is that my inability as a new person to figure out the financial piece kind of hurt me a little bit. But the fact that I was going through it at the same time with a lot of my coat with a lot of my clients helped me. So mm -hmm. going from this perspective, going forward, I will start to mention the idea of the five people helping me stay really solid in my program from the beginning so that pe so that my people going forward will know that you can't really get five in one results from $150 worth of product. And that's kind of what I've noticed in my, you know, growth and learning through this whole process is that they might have been saying they were doing five and one, but if I had known a little bit more about finances, I would have known <laughs> they probably weren't. And they might have gone to coaching if they needed to. Yeah, and still could if they're still around. So that's a huge observation. And the, um, you know what I mean? And, and then really having the courage to even challenge individuals. Like, I'm just curious, like we've been talking every week, you know, but, um, you know, is it, has it been a financial thing that you haven't put in or, you know, and you'll find out because maybe it fits a financial need like it did for you to pay for your program. So that's great. Debbie. Um, one thing that conversation I've had is a lot of our friends are approaching retirement and a lot of them have said, like, like you said, like they've got the handcuffs on, like I can't retire, you know, like maybe their, maybe their retirement funds are fully funded but they don't want to start taking money out of the retirement funds. And so I just chime in with them. And it's like, I totally get that. I a hundred percent got that. Uh, that was me. I had certain goals around retirement. I want to travel and I, you know, and we've already created a budget around what our retirement money looks like. And yeah, I can like, you know, let's go have dinner, like get you and your husband or, you know, if it's a husband, I'll say, get you and your, get your wife and let's have a dinner with Brian and I, and let's talk about that and how, but the, you know, my income has impacted our lifestyle. And mine's not huge, but it's been enough to cover travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know Linda Young has had that same experience, retired teacher and their income provided for her travel. So, um, well, very good. Well, hopefully these spending these three weeks on this has, has equipped you to just, you know, shift a little bit, like I said, three simple shifts um, to increase your engagement, to increase your health assessments, and then increase your coach explorers, which allows us to help more people. So um, really glad you guys were on tonight that we could be in this together. Um, congratulations again to um, Lori Pulver, our newest executive director. Congratulations to all of you for what you contribute to this team. 
team. Um, thank you, Debbie, for sharing about the content. And um, I'll let you go so you can hop over to that um, community call um, with Meg. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye.